Hi, I'm honored to get a chance to talk to you on this important day. My name is Darren Lapomi. I'm a professor of nanoengineering and chemical engineering at UC San Diego. It's been 15 years since my own graduation from Boston University and almost 19 years since I was a freshman. Like so many other students, I chose my undergraduate major without a clear idea of what the majors meant or how you could possibly fill up four years of content on a single topic. So I joined a major not because I knew anything about it, but because I thought it had the coolest name, biomedical engineering. However, the Tuesday of my second week of classes was September 11th, 2001, and the events of that day changed my trajectory forever. First and for for foremost, I no longer wanted anything to do with my engineering coursework, which I felt was cold and impersonal. Instead, I wanted to learn about human beings and what made them behave the way they did. I changed my major to anthropology, which came in two flavors, cultural and biological. Since I didn't want to abandon my interest in the hard sciences entirely, I chose the biological track. During this course, I was introduced to the work of primatologist Alison Jolly, who wrote a delightful book called Lucy's Legacy, which further introduced me to the work of Edward O. Wilson, an expert on social insects and the founder of the field of sociobiology. However, I kept up with my general chemistry sequence of Chem 101 and Chem 102 completely superfluously. I already had AP credit for these courses, and they were not, necessarily, uh, not necessary for my major in anthropology. However, I had an outstanding teacher for two years in high school chemistry, Mr. Dowd, who had a way of endowing motives to atoms, molecules, and functional groups, like fluorine as the greediest element because of its electronegativity, and later I learned from Professor Snyder at BU about the capitalist rule of electron pair donation, namely, the more you have, the less you want to share. In fact, I didn't even consider majoring in chemistry because I thought the engineering title was initially so attractive. However, my interest in chemistry was piqued at my first ever college lecture, Chem 101 in Psi 113, where Professor Carad Caradonna gave the entire chemical history of the universe in about 47 minutes, and that was pretty cool. In the winter semester of 2002, I took Chem 102 with Professor Straub. Early in the quarter, we spoke at office hours about careers in chemistry and even my interests in E.O. Wilson and sociobiology. He recommended several books to me which opened the floodgates of this new intersectional field that straddled the physical sciences, behavior, and philosophy. I changed my major from biological anthropology to biochemistry, then to straight-up chemistry, then added a minor in physics. So in total, I had four majors in my first uh, 12 months at BU. In 2003, I was awarded the Beckman Scholars Fellowship, which allowed me to do research in any one of 10 approved labs on campus. I chose to work with uh, Professor James Panic. I never told Jim, but my first choice professor, based on the on-paper description, didn't answer his emails, but Jim did. And a good thing, uh, uh, too. Um, uh, over the course of three summers and two academic years, I worked in Jim's group with my grad student mentor, Neil Langell. Balancing the research lab with my coursework was one of the most difficult set of tasks that I've ever had to balance, even now teaching from home with a daughter who turns one today, but it was worth it. Eventually, I got into a top PhD program in chemistry, did a postdoc at a top program in chemical engineering, and have been at my current position for almost eight full years. In my current position, and after I got tenure, I began to carve out a niche at the interface between materials chemistry and human behavior, namely using reconfigurable materials to understand perception and cognition through the sense of touch, and making material-based devices that help clinicians study and improve patient behavior when they are prescribed at-home therapies. So, in a way, this is biomedical engineering after all, but the key point is that the innovations are in chemistry and the outlook is sort of philosophical and behavioral, so it's all sort of coming together. Many of you will be continuing to graduate school and many of you are going to enter the real world. As you'll be facing a pretty tough job market, it's really important that you embrace the widest possible definition of chemistry. Often it seems like academic departments cluster around a few subfields like organic synthesis, computation, coordination chemistry, spectroscopy, chemical biology, and so on. 
However, the dictionary definition of chemistry is still the best one because of how inclusive it is, namely the structure and properties of matter and the changes it undergoes. Also, your training as a natural scientist is powerful. You know how to make an argument, how to separate truth from fiction in a world annoyingly full of the latter, and how stuff works and how it's measured. Also, this is an absolutely fantastic time to take a gap year or second gap year and do scientifically oriented public service. This is after all a time when the skills we learn in chem chemistry are critically in high demand. So in closing, I'll admit that I'm paraphrasing or adapting an argument that Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs on the Discovery Channel made. Um, that is, I won't tell you to follow your passion because passion is often, I've found, a byproduct of learning and commitment. So perhaps it's better to follow your opportunities and take the tools you've acquired to generate passion with you wherever your opportunity takes you.